In a new interview, the Duke of Sussex has opened up about his ongoing tension with the royal family, declaring that silence is betrayal. And here to tell us more, Royal Editor for the Mirror, Russell Myers. Hello, Russell. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Vanessa. Don't know, though, whether it's going to be such a happy New Year for the King or for Prince William, given that Harry and Meghan really do not seem to want to pipe down about any of this. And if anything, these trailers for the book, I and mean, we've done the trailers for the show, we've seen the programmes, all six of them, I had to sit through the whole gruesome lot of it. But anyway, now we've got trailers for the book and they look pretty incendiary, don't they? Well, I mean, you know, we're just trying to kick off 2023, but it feels like Groundhog Day, doesn't it? I mean, uh, no no doubt for us as journalists having to watch the, the six hours of Netflix series that you, you mentioned, but also for the royal family as well. They, they are certainly uh, feeling uh, completely weary of Harry and Meghan's insistence to keep raking over old coals. But, um, you know, in these new two promotional uh, trailers that we saw yesterday, one for CBS and one for ITV, we've... We've seen a little bit more of Harry, and I think that uh, in in the two interviews that he's given to Anderson Cooper and Tom Bradby, we will perhaps see him probed more uh, than he has been in the past. I mean, Oprah Winfrey gave him a free pass, uh, both him and Meghan, and certainly in the Netflix series, it was completely one-sided. So perhaps he'll be more challenged on the, on the reasons as to why he left, and uh, and perhaps. We, we might get a bit of contrition and see if, uh, see if he could have done things differently, but, although I wouldn't, I wouldn't bank on it. Let, let's explain the Tom, the Tom Bradby connection, because there is a connection, isn't there, here? Um, Harry hasn't just likely decided to give this interview. He's chosen Tom Bradby for historical reasons. Well, he has. I mean, Tom was a, a royal correspondent back in the 90s. He's, he's known both brothers, uh, Harry and William, for more than 20 years. And certainly his, uh, his relationship with William is pretty much non-existent now. I'd say well, completely non-existent because he put himself firmly in the Sussex camp. I think back in 2018, he was this sort of mastermind behind the ITV documentary when they went over to South Africa. That uh, infamous line from Meghan Markle saying, you know, thanks for thanks for asking if I'm OK, because because nobody's asked. And they're set in train the, uh, the, the the emotion, the, the train wreck, which we've uh, we, which we've got now. And certainly um, if it's 90 minutes, one would hope that uh, that Tom, from a journalistic point of view, is uh, is probing some more questions that ha haven't really been asked of Harry. I mean, what's quite interesting, I think, is, I mean, I watched all six, as I've said, of, 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 of their documentary, six episodes. And in one of them, don't Harry and Meghan imply that they didn't really realise that those conversation, that conversation they had on their tour with Tom Bradby was going to be televised. They were shocked and amazed and astounded when it made headlines all over the world. They really couldn't believe that it was going to get the coverage that it got. They hadn't intended it, etc, etc. Lots of that. That's part of their documentary. And then lo and behold, what does Harry go and do but give Tom Bradby another exclusive interview? You might have thought that if they were genuinely amazed, horror-stricken, outraged, aggrieved or any other thing that the uh, conversation they had with him got so much publicity, they wouldn't have given him another interview, would they? Well, twofold here. I mean, I was on that tour in South Africa and uh, there was a huge, you know, huge camera crew following them around, following their every move away from the, the, the Royal Road or the, the pack of photographers that, that do travel with them. So it was always going to be a big deal. And, I, and I, then it, I look at what Harry had also said Meghan uh, and Harry said in the Netflix series that they didn't realise the sort of bombshells that they were dropping about a potential uh, royal racist within the within the family. Uh, they didn't think that that would be the big deal. They thought it would all be about um, Meghan's me mental health. So I don't think these two really know how the media work. I mean, we've, we've had this already, these repeated allegations of how Buckingham Palace were leaking stories to all and sundry to make them look bad. And there doesn't seem to be a lot of introspection a lot of the time. So uh, it's pretty much one way traffic. Are you expecting kind of bombshell content from Spare? Because you can't, can't help wondering, well, what else can they say that they didn't cover in that interminable documentary? I mean, six parts, were they at least an hour long each? They felt like seven or eight hours long. Um, what else is there to say? What can they say? They've given Oprah the interview. We've seen all the documentary. What else can they put in? Do you think it's going to be much more kind of intimate detail about relationships with Prince William, with Kate, with his father, with Camilla, maybe? Maybe maybe much more about how he felt when his mother died and his grief process. I don't know. 
Yeah, well, no, I think, uh, you know, I've seen some of the blurbs from the publishers and they've, they've called it, you know, not intimate portrayal that very much goes into detail. ITV said this yesterday about going into detail about his, uh, the trauma created from, from the early death of his mother. And no doubt you know, that has really marked Harry throughout his life. That's, uh, that's a cross he, he still bears openly. And he's, and he's spoken quite eloquently at times about how wanting to help other people through that trauma. However... I mean, you can bet your bottom dollar if there is money on the table that Harry and Meghan will still find things to talk about. And that is why they've been paid an incredible amount of money. I mean, 100 million from Netflix, another 30 odd million from Spotify for Meghan's podcast. You know, the big figures are bounded around for this book. And it seems that they are still producing the goods. Um, whether people are getting turned off of it, well, uh, we'll have to see after the book, won't we? Because I think the Netflix series didn't really do them any favours. And after these two uh, two promos, it does look a little bit more juicy than the, the Netflix series. So uh, I, I suppose we'll have to have to wait and see. But I would expect that uh, that Harry has to has to come up with the goods. For Russell, I've got I have a caller on the line. Terence is oh. ringing from London, and I wouldn't mind you responding to the call since you're the royal expert. But that would be good. Terence, hello. Thanks a lot for ringing. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Vanessa. How are you? I'm well. How are you, sir? I tell you, Vanessa, I had withdraw withdrawal symptoms over Christmas. Ah! Uh, you were not on, you oh. know. I think, I think you're wonderful. And just before I go on, Vanessa... I'm blushing now. Now I'm going to have to hide my face. You Now I'm thoroughly <laughs> blushing. Honestly, Terence, yes, you mustn't Vanessa, do this to me. Yes. Vanessa, you must have been good at English at school. Your, your adjectives are just... <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I was wondering for a minute what you were going to say, and then you said my adjectives, which I think is perfectly acceptable no, to say in public. Now, listen, we've got we've got our, our expert here waiting. Russell's waiting to hear what you want to say about yeah, Meghan and Harry. What would you like yeah, to say, uh, Terence? I was I knew um, Harry and Meghan had burned all their bridges before all of this other business, because you've got to remember she was Meghan. The elephant in the room is Meghan. She came from uh, sunny Florida or where, where she was queen and everything. L.A. When she married, L.A., when she married into the royal family, it's hierarchical. Mm. In America, they don't understand that. It's all about glamour in America. So when she curtsied to the queen, she had to curtsy then to Charles. And here is the problem. She had to curtsy to Kate. You see? Right. And, this is, and so this statement by Harry says it all. I want my father and my brother back. Mm -hmm. Not the institution of monarchy, inverted commas. And to me, this proves that the problem is Kate, not Harry. He's besotted with her, so he'll do anything she says or wants. Mm. And I, I would like, uh, Vanessa, to know what your expert says on well, this. Well, let's see what he has to say. Terence, thanks yeah. a lot for the call. So, so... The idea is, uh, you heard what Terence said there, that it's, it's, it's Meghan, it's her inability or her, her, her lack of desire to kind of grapple with the hierarchy, which definitely is part of the royal family. But this idea, I want my, my father and brother back, but I want family, not the institution, that's an impossibility, isn't it? It's all bound up, it's all one thing. Yeah, unfortunately, and I think that that's what Harry had had a real issue with. I mean, he 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 didn't like the the, the institution the the way it was. I mean, he definitely wanted to do things his own way. We fell in love with him as sort of the the uh, the, the daring prince who had been over to Afghanistan, served two tours of duty. We thought him as a bit of a lovable rogue, falling out of nightclubs. And then when it came to sort of you know carrying on with the duty side of the thing, I think he really struggled with his identity. But then he met Meghan, you know, incredibly uh, vivacious woman who had a great career, fantastic orator. She'd worked with the UN. Some real excitement, you know, not only within the British public, but the media, especially the family as well, I think, were, were hugely supportive of how they could have been, a, you know, a new force for good within the monarchy. But it, it went sour very, very quickly. And I think maybe Harry needs to look at himself and whether he really did explain uh, you know, the full truth, as it were, of what it was like being a member of the royal family before she entered it. Do you think it's awkward that it's so evident that the couple are so hugely privileged? You know, that the background, the back cloth is this magnificent mansion on rolling acres, that they kind of bought themselves an enormous chunk of American hillside, and that people watching, particularly, you know, in a massive 
cost of living crisis, who've struggled through Christmas, who are worried sick in the new year about how on earth they're going to keep their heads above water in a country riven by strikes, with an NHS that we keep being told is either broken or at breaking point, going to find it hard to empathise and or sympathise with them because they're having such a fabulous time out there, it seems. Well, of course, to Vanessa, you said it yourself, a huge cost of living crisis. Everybody is feeling the pinch, not only just at home, but abroad as well. And how does it look when they are sort of bemoaning the, the fact that they're living in a $14 million mansion whilst uh, while, while still carrying on complaining? I mean, the, the issue really is, if Harry had left and, and Meghan had left and said it was all about privacy, we wanted a new life for us and our children, and they disappeared into the wilderness... I think most people would have really backed them. But the fact that these are continued attacks and they're continued uh, attacks and railing against the royal family, let's not forget about it, for huge sums of money. And that is the only reason that they are continuing to do this, because they have a very expensive lifestyle that they need to upkeep. And, um, and I think that now, after the Netflix series, after Oprah Winfrey, after everybody is uh, really struggling... Uh, people are going to say we've had enough now and um, and, and really turn off their uh, their calls, which they could have had uh, a lot of public sympathy for. You see, I, I I read the other day somewhere or other that that Meghan will also be producing a book, so we'll have the documentary, yeah. the Oprah interview, Harry's book, Spare, and then Meghan's point of view in a book. I mean, maybe we'll just go on and on and on. Maybe I mean I said earlier on the program a range of tablecloths, personalised <laughs> chicken houses, children's clothing, makeup. You know, hair um, products. I mean, it could be absolutely anything and everything, could it? And after all, let's face it, there is precedent for this. I mean, Sarah, Duchess of York, had a good go at flogging Wedgwood China, didn't she? And all kinds of different budgie the helicopter or something or other. And then we had Peter Phillips, you know, doing adverts for Windsor Milk. I mean, you know, there's precedent for it in the royal family, isn't there? Well, I, th I do think there will be more from Harry and Meghan. I mean, they signed this huge deal with Netflix. I think you will see a definite follow-up of what Harry and Meghan dig next. It's sort of crying out for it, isn't it? Uh, whether we are. I mean, I think Netflix will be because they will want to get their money's worth out of them. Definitely Meghan will, will want, again, her side of the story. And again, I don't think we will hear the last of them because they do have a legion of fans, regardless of whether we're getting a bit sick and tired of it. There are people who still want to hear their story, who still do support their causes. And uh, and, and part of it is, is charity for them. They do want to, to be able to t change people's lives. And in order to do that, they need to be able to fund it and fund their charitable endeavours. And uh, they need to keep talking. So it's uh, it's kind of this merry-go-round that's not going to stop anytime soon, unfortunately. Well, thank you very much indeed, Russell, for joining us to talk about it.